All right, so you've decided that you want to get a new camera. Maybe you guys are having a new kid and you're ready to just have photos that are better than iPhone photos. Or maybe your work came to you and said that they want to step up their social media game and they want you to start making photos and videos that are high quality. Or maybe you just want to start a new hobby and you don't know which camera to get. So, what's next? My name is Tony. If you don't know who I am, I'm a filmmaker and photographer in St. Louis, Missouri. And today we're talking cameras, specifically entry-level cameras. Cameras designed for people who don't know much about video or photo. So all the time I have people ask me like what camera should I buy or what lenses do I need and what kind of batteries and memory cards and all of these things and there's like this overwhelming sense that you just have to spend thousands of dollars to get into good photos and video. But that's just not the case. It's not true. Companies like Nikon and Canon and Sony and Panasonic, they all make cameras at what's called an entry level camera so that you can get your feet in there and start taking photos without spending thousands of dollars. So today we're going to be talking about what camera do I recommend. So today I want to introduce to you the Canon EOS Rebel SL2. The Canon SL2, I love this little camera. I've recommended this camera to tons of people just because it does a great job of blending the features that you need and the price point that you wanna pay. So let's talk about some of the reasons why I think this is the best entry level camera that's out there right now. So there's no doubt that I'm a little bit of a fanboy with Canon, but there's a reason for that. It's because I love the Canon ecosystem. And what I mean by that is that Canon has created a system that all works together. If you pick up a Canon, you know you're gonna get their color science in this body, whether it's a $500 camera or it's a $5,000 camera. Also, all of their lenses are gonna work on this camera. Any EF mount lens is gonna work on this camera. It doesn't matter if it's $100 or if it's $5,000. They're gonna work on this little camera, which is awesome. All of these things work together. The color science, the color science in this camera is the same one as the 1DX Mark II, which means that you're gonna get some amazing photos out of this camera, even though it's only a couple hundred bucks. So. I believe in the Canon system. Sure, they may not come out with the most advanced specs every month like other companies, but when they come out with a product, I know that it's gonna be reliable. So that's one of the reasons why I love to suggest this Canon product to someone getting started. All right, another thing I love about this camera is the size. Look how small this is. It's incredibly small. Look how small it is compared to my 5D Mark IV. There's a significant difference there. And if you stick a small lens on this camera, you can stick it in the top of your backpack, you can stick it in your purse, go about your day and not even have to lug around a whole nother camera bag for when you wanna take photos. You just have it with you. It's small, it's compact, but it's still powerful. All right, so another reason why I really love this camera is the size that it is and the specs that it still carries. For example, it has a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, which is essentially the same sensor that is in my Canon 80D that I take professional photos and videos with. It's crazy that they can shove it in this size of body. It also has dual pixel autofocus, the focus that I'm using right now. If I go in, if I go back, I'm in focus. I don't ever have to worry about it. It's completely reliable. It's completely trustable autofocus. You don't get that with all cameras. Another thing that I love about it, it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which means you can take a picture, you can send it to your phone, you can edit it, put it on Instagram, all within just a few simple motions. Um, it's got 1080p video, which means that it shoots full HD video at 60 frames per second. So if you're getting into shooting video, that means that you can do slow motion video, the same slow motion video that I can do on my Canon 80D. Get that smooth, smooth, buttery B-roll, just like this. 
Another thing that this camera has that we don't want to overlook is it's got a menu system that one is the same as all of the other Canons. So that means if you pick up this camera, you're going to be able to navigate around if you pick up another camera. All of the Canon cameras basically have a very similar um, layout so that you're not hunting around for your settings no matter what body you're on. We don't want to overlook this as it's got the articulating touchscreen. My 5D Mark IV doesn't even have this. And sure, it's fun for selfies, but it's also very fun if you're trying to get a low down photo. You can move the camera all the way to the ground and you can articulate this thing out and you can still see what you're shooting. That's a big, big advantage in my book. And it's the perfect design. It doesn't go above it, it doesn't go below it. It comes out to the side uh, just like it needs to. All right, another thing that I really love about this camera is the price. You can get this thing as a refurbed with a lens for $450. That means you're ready to go for $450. Bucks. If you just want to buy it new from B&H Photo or Amazon, you're looking at closer to $550 and then you have to get a lens. But still, you're getting a camera that has a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor that can shoot full HD at 60 frames per second with an articulating screen for $550. If this camera would have come out just a couple years ago, I would have been all over that instead of buying some of the, the higher end cameras that I bought. It's crazy price point. All right, and the last reason why I love this camera is it is designed for entry level users. Meaning it has a feature in this camera that shows you and helps you understand what it's doing. So yes, it does have automatic where you can put a lens on and fire away and boom, you go. But it also has a feature that you can stick it in manual mode and it will show you what it's doing. So it helps you understand what aperture does. It helps you understand what ISO does. It helps you understand what shutter speed is and why you need to adjust your white balance. And all of those things are baked into the feature menu to help you understand what's going on. That's a big thing for someone who's learning how to use a DSLR. If you're just gonna put it in automatic, I suggest you just buy a point and shoot. But this is kind of the camera that will help you get into being able to understand what photography is and how to really take good photos. So, at the end of the day, you can choose whatever you want, but I think that this is a great, a great entry-level camera, and I suggest it to anyone, even people who are a little bit intermediate, maybe you have a, an old Rebel T3 or T5 or whatever, this is gonna be a big step up just because of some of the features like the dual pixel autofocus, the 60 frames per second. It's just a really great camera. So, if you have any questions, let me know. I would love for you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like, comment, all of those things helps get this video into the hands of people who are searching for entry-level cameras. And if you have any questions, seriously, I would love to talk to you. Send me a message on Instagram, send me a message on Facebook, what, however you can get a hold of me. I'd love to talk cameras with you. Other than that, have a great week and we'll see you next time.